Mr. Justice Hidden told the two there was about these killings a hard and ruthless edge which can only horrify and stagger the non-criminal mind. He recommended that both should serve a minimum of 15 years. The gangland slaying of three drug dealers in Retterdon was always going to be a tremendous task for Essex detectives. But with two men starting life sentences for the murders, it was clearly not impossible. The execution killings of Pat Tate, Tony Tucker and Craig Rolfe by Michael Steele and Jack Wombs revolved around an international drugs deal which turned sour. It plunged former superintendent Ivan Dibley into the biggest investigation of his career, just four months before he was due to retire. And the detective who took over the inquiry, Detective Superintendent Brian Storey, said this week he was both satisfied and delighted by the verdict. Most importantly, it sent a message to all criminals that even those seen as big league are not immune from justice. The verdict comes after an investigation and trial revealing some breathtaking statistics. During the two-year investigation, a team of about 25 detectives took over a thousand statements and completed 5,000 actions. During the 21-week Old Bailey trial, the Metropolitan Police supplied daily 72 officers to provide round-the-clock personal protection for each and every jury member. The main prosecution witness was in the box almost continuously for an amazing 25 days. The judge took seven and a half days to sum up and the jury less than five and a half weeks to convict, delivering a unanimous verdict. It was certainly worth the wait and waiting was something the inquiry team were used to, Superintendent Story explained. We had an idea very early on who was responsible for the murders and an earlier arrest may have provided additional forensic evidence, but there was other risks to consider. The nature of the people involved meant an earlier arrest could frighten off vital witnesses, and also meant the murderers might resist their criminal activities. Essex police chose to sit tight and it paid off. We took a calculated risk, but we wanted to make sure that we were in the best position, evidently, before we made a move, said Mr Story. The villains were active and dangerous criminals, who were aware of how to cover their tracks and conceal forensic evidence, even down to knowing what clothes to wear. Steele also admitted in court that he believed he was under constant surveillance by both police and customs. Ironically, it was the use of their mobile phones and careful analysis which helped secure their convictions. Mr Story said, Steele's downfall was partly due to the fact that he thought he was untouchable and thought he would never get caught. But by biding our time, we proved him wrong. How long the message will last, I don't know. But the message is, no matter how professional you are, or think you are, no matter how well you have planned your crime or think you have, you are not immune. A meticulous investigation and of course a few lucky breaks can make even those crimes solvable. Labelled a one witness trial, Mr Story admits the key prosecution was of vital importance to the investigation. I always thought we would have enough evidence to make an arrest, he said, but not necessarily enough evidence to convict. We had a lot of information from the public but very little cooperation from those close to the victims because of the nature of the crime. The key was getting somebody who knew what went on that night to talk. The investigation relied heavily on us using a full range of policing skills. The only way to combat those professional criminals was to use every aspect of policing available and the outcome is a tribute to all those involved, not only within Essex Police but within the other agencies who assisted us such as HM Customs, and we thank everyone involved, no matter how small their role. It is not the first time Essex Police earned such a result. Another lengthy inquiry known as Operation Max led to the conviction of Jason Veller and his gang, who headed a drugs and torture regime in Essex. And just 24 hours after the resident verdict, two members of the neo-Nazi group Combat 18 were convicted of murdering Christopher Castle in Harlow. Jubilant detectives today heaved a sigh of relief after five major drug barons were wiped out of the South Essex equation. Endless police hours have been poured into the triple killing investigation, hailed by the officer head in the case as the most important of his career. The costly Retterdon case will most definitely have an impact on drugs being sold on the streets of Essex. Detective Superintendent Brian Storey, who led the murder investigation, said the death of the three drug barons and life sentences for their two killers will help reduce dealings. He added, There will be a big difference in the short term, 
but I cannot say how things will develop in the long term. Mr. Story 47 said the case was one of the most important battles against drug dealers over the past 30 years. He went on to praise colleagues for their professionalism and the many hours they spent trying to secure a conviction for the gruesome murders. He added, The case has been a long, difficult haul. It has been one of the most important I have had to deal with and probably one of the most important of my career. Mr Story said the dreadful killings are yet more evidence of the evils of drugs. He explained, The people who suffer are not only those who sacrifice their health and income to become victims of the dealers. Life for drug supplies is also very risky. There is no trust or honour in the drugs world. In this case, three lives have been taken and two men are starting life prison sentences for these murders. Mr Story said he could not comment on the evidence of supergrass Darren Nichols, the main prosecution witness, or a related trial involving other defendants later this year. The entire case rested on one question. Did the jury believe Darren Nichols or not? Without his evidence, the prosecution would have had no case. It was his word alone which put Jack Wombs and Michael Steele in Workhouse Lane, Retiden on December the 6th, 1995. The two defence teams said Nichols was a cunning and devious liar trying to frame their clients. The prosecution admitted Nichols was not whiter than white, but was adamant that his version of events could be believed. And they said other evidence backed up what he said. After four and a half days of deliberations, the jury agreed. Nichols, a well-known criminal from Braintree, was already a police informer before the triple murder. But in May 1996, he found himself being arrested alongside Steen and Worms on suspicion of the three killings. He soon revealed a version of events which implicated Steen and Worms. The defence lawyers claim he was spinning a convincing yarn to protect himself or somebody else. But the prosecution counsel, Andrew Monday QC, said Nichols had no reason to lie. And if he did, why not make the evidence more damning against his two former accomplices. Detectives had given Darren Nichols a secret new identity, fearing he could now be in danger. His appearance has even changed, and his address is top secret. Each member of the 12-strong jury also had two undercover police officers protecting them round the clock during the trial. Oh, <laughs> oh,